Uh, thank you, Angela. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm truly honored to be here today uh, to say a few words about uh, Canadian Blood Services and, and what we do. Um, uh, these are some of the programs, the opportunities that we have at, uh, in, in Canadian Blood Services. Uh, my apologies, I thought you know, just I switched this off, but... Let's turn it off. Uh, so, uh, Partners for Life program uh, is one of the programs that we have in the organization. Uh, we have the One Match Stem Cell and Marrow Network Program, uh, which supports patients, uh, sub patients like leukemia patients. We also have the National Cord Blood Bank, uh, which was uh, founded, as you probably remember, a few years ago, uh, about five years ago now. We have a National Cord Blood Bank. Uh, we have the organ and tissue uh, donation transplantation management aspect of the program, also. Uh, the registry is uh, with the uh, uh, provincial registry organizations, the management aspect of uh, the, uh, this program is also uh, falls uh, under Canadian uh, Blood Services. Uh, and we do have also Volunteers for Life program. So uh, there is always, uh, you know, we say, you know, we like to say there is something almost for everyone uh, in Canadian Blood Services. If you are able to donate blood, you can donate blood, uh, or you can be a volunteer, or you can be a stem cell or bone marrow donor or a national umbilical cord program, or you can become also an organ uh, or a volunteer uh, for life program <coughs> uh, participant. Um, you know, I like, you know, we like to talk about numbers at uh, Canadian Blood Services. So uh, th this is just a collection target for 2017, you know, which is of course you know, coming to an end. Uh, so to see in perspective about the, uh, the scope of what we do and what we require. Uh, over 800,000 uh, units of blood are needed uh, you know, this year, in 2017, uh, to meet the needs of patients. So a unit, as you probably know, is what a person donates at a time. Uh, that is what a unit is. Uh, so uh, you know, over 800,000 uh, units of blood is needed every year. And we have a goal every year to attract about 100,000 new blood donors, and this is to you know, some of our blood donors, regular blood donors, are reaching that age uh, that they cannot uh, donate anymore. So we have to have uh, new blood donors come on board uh, to uh, replace those. We support about 700 hospitals nationally and some healthcare facilities. Uh, and we need to collect, to, to, to see again perspective, about 16,000 uh, units per week to fill hospital orders, and this is nationally. Uh, you know, this is just a you know, figure that I like to talk about usually. So 52% of Canadians, you know, you probably, some of you, you know, could be here, uh, say they or their family members needed blood or blood products. That's one out of two Canadians would say that. Uh, but, and 30%, one out of three uh, are, uh, you know, eligible blood donors say that they intend to donate. But at the end of the day, only uh, 4% do. Four out of 100 actually donate. So that is a, uh, a very small percentage, as you can see, and our, our, our effort uh, and our mandate is to increase that number uh, to a higher rate. Uh, you know, just you know, a few, again, just you know, to, to see this in perspective, uh, a patient, you know, what to see in context. So how many units of blood or what volume of blood would people need in for different treatments? Uh, so this is a patient, so for, it can take up to eight units of blood for someone, to support someone with leukemia. That is eight units a week. And this could be a very extended period of time. Uh, and uh, for a car crash, uh, a you know, severe car crash that we have on our highways almost on a daily basis, uh, no, there was a no. Uh, I don't know just you know, how severe it was, but on my way down here on 401 West, I saw a car 401 East actually, you know, eastbound. There was a you know car crash. So you know, someone in a car crash may need up to 50 units of blood. So that's 50 units. Again, to see it in perspective, this comes from 50 people, 50 units, meaning coming from 50 blood donors. Uh, and someone uh, needing you know, cardiovascular surgery could need up to five units, uh, and so on and so forth. And there was, then, of course, you know, just you know, a whole lot of discussion today about you know, alpha, lung, and uh, liver. A liver transplant, someone with a liver transplant could need up to 100 units of blood. 
100 units. That comes from 100 blood donors. So, you know, just you know, what do we do in an hour? So, you know, just to say again in context and what we can do in an hour, you know, of course, you know, we can watch our favorite primetime show, uh, tele TV. Uh, we can uh, meet a friend for coffee. You know, we can take class. Uh, you know, we can work out in the gym. We can go grocery shopping and so on and so forth. So there are so many things that we do in an hour. So what else can we do in an hour? So we can do also, we can donate and save a life. And that is a power of giving blood we can save a life in an hour. So we say an hour, that's how long it takes for someone to donate blood start to finish is one hour. So these are patients, real patients that we have worked with and we support. And I have met you know, most of these patients uh, or, or their families uh, that we see here. Uh, so donate blood just in an hour. So, uh, you know, there are a few slides in the interest of time. I know it has been a long day for you, so I'll go the slides, some of the slides very quickly. So how we can help, you know, uh, and what is involved in becoming a blood donor. So there is a strict criteria, of course, and in our commitment to support uh, the patients and to make the uh, blood uh, supply safe, we have a very strict criteria in place and we encourage people to go to our website or call our number and inquire. There are a few items that I can talk about here, like for example, you know, minimum age requirement is 70 years old, uh, photo identification is required, if people have tattoo or piercing, they have to wait six months, uh, you know you need to eat well and drink well before you donate. Uh, and so on and so forth. And the most uh, uh, you know, criteria that is really affecting you know, blood donors right now is travel, travel outside of Canada and the US. If people have traveled to uh, what we call malaria risk countries, then you may have to wait a year. Unfortunately, uh, you know, that is really a huge impact uh, having you know, pressure on our blood donors. So if you have gone to a malaria risk country, you may have to wait 12 months. Um, so it goes on. So this is just a screening process. So anytime a person donates, to, you, know, you come to our clinic, there is a question that you go through. It is not a paper uh, form like this anymore. It is actually digital people that you do on, on, on our tablet when you come to a clinic. But uh, the questions are pretty much like these. And so you'll go, you will have to go through this questionnaire every time you donate. And this is again to uh, keep the blood supply safe. Um, and the donation process, uh, you know, it's very simple. You know, you come to a clinic, uh, you check in, and then you, know, you answer the questions on our tablet, uh, and uh, you'll see uh, a nurse uh, who will uh, do a screening, has questionnaire, confidential, uh, hemoglobin or iron level is checked, review of the health questionnaire, and some uh, you know, blood pressure and temperature is checked, and if everything is good, so you'll go ahead and donate. It takes, it takes about you know, an hour, the whole process. Uh, uh, a pint or 450 milliliters uh, uh, is how much you donate at a time, which is a standard, uh, and uh, it is a very safe process. And of course, you know, juice, coffee, and uh, you know, uh, cookies and pop water uh, on us each time people donate. Uh, so how we can help? Uh, you know, donate if you can and when you can. Uh, spread the word. Talk to your friends, family members about how important this is and the importance of blood donation. Uh, you can organize what we call group donation. This is where people go as a team. It could be friends and family. It could be employees of a certain organization who can go and donate as a team and save a life. You can also what we call adopt a clinic and that is encouraging your members to go to a certain clinic. You uh, designate a date and clinic where you can go and donate. So there are many ways that you can support uh, Canadian Blood Services and the patients we serve. Uh, if any questions, uh, no, by all means, uh, I can address them. And uh, that's my contact information there. And you can uh, check our website as well, uh, blood.ca. And uh, thank you.